Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Mindfulness with Drew. So this is a show about mindful talks with people who have achieved something uh, special in their field. Some people who are the trailblazers, as the name of the series is also the Trailblazer series. And as I have always like promised you that I'm going to bring certain guests to my show who have done something spectacular in their particular field. So today, I'm so glad to have Ms. Harpreet Bhat Barar from Vancouver, Canada on my show. Uh, Harpreet is uh, like she belongs to the field of nursing. She has gained a doctorate in nursing. And like this is all about her qualification and whatever. But I just want to introduce her as my friend. She's a friend of mine. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> Welcome to Mindfulness with Roop Harpreet. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to have you today with me. And like, I want you to define yourself. Like as a friend, I just see my friend in you, that she's my friend, that's it. I don't know like about the details of qualifications and whatever field you are into, but I want you to define yourself. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. And I, it has, it's been an honor to work with you. Um, I remember all the fun moments and stuff. And it was destiny that an English teacher would meet an, a nursing instructor and we would be <laughs> together. Um, yes. so, yeah, and, and it's fun to be on your show. And I'm so happy with what you're doing So um, about, about myself. So um, I come from a very simple family um, where we were two sisters. Um, mom and dad were working just like every other um, you know, person's mom and dad who are my age now and people who were very much into education that oh you know our girls they need to be independent that was the time right when when things were opening up and women were actually getting to do much more than what they used to do before so i'm, I'm blessed to have um, that kind of a, that kind of parents in my life and then I, I, I went to a very good school. Um, I, I did my graduation from a very good university. I went to BJ Chandigarh for doing my BSN. Then I went ahead and I, I never thought I would do so much in nursing because I was more of a, like a literature person because of my convent education. I was more into uh, you know short stories and Shakespeare and all that stuff. But then my dad was like, no, you know, you have to have that secure future, which is so much in India. Now coming here, I feel like, oh, I would have been a different person if I was here. But then it's great the way things <laughs> turned out. So I went ahead and studied my master's. And then I got married to a wonderful person who also happened to be a nurse, who is also my business partner now. So don't ask me how we get along. We get along well. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, then I did my PhD. I have a I have a boy, so that's the fun part of my life. Um, he is seven years old, and he is like my second boyfriend. So <laughs> yeah, I enjoy my life with him. Apart from that, I teach a lot because at the end of the day, I think this is the only thing which I can do kind of best that I can just teach. I don't know anything totally. else. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's all about me. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> No, and you know, you mentioned about literature, your love for literature and all, and then how like uh, destiny made us meet each other, you know, and I was also shocked. Uh, like for me, it was like a setup where everybody is related to medicine or uh, like nursing in particular. So I was also shocked at that point of time that you know so much about literature and everything and then the hold uh, you had on the language and everything. So um, was it only because of your convent education or somebody like inspired you somebody uh, in the family or any friend of yours or some like fictional character had some kind of impact on you what was it <laughs> uh, yeah you, you know how uh, so this is like very 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 funny to me now when i realized that oh my god how much emphasis we were lay, we, we were made to put on our english language and stuff but it worked out well when you when you move here, you need it, right? Um, but initially there was like, I don't know how it how it was planned and stuff, but my dad thought, okay, let's let's put this girl into a good school. So we were living in a village at that time, and I was the first person from that village and that to a girl who was who was sent to a convent school and was like a oh, journey. Wow. And travel, I think an hour every single day, like hour back and forth, two hours okay. of my visit. 
And then my grandfather, he was like me. So um, um, he, he always wanted to read books and stuff. So he made sure that I was reading books and he would tell me, oh, you know what? If you, if you want to learn a language, the best way is to go read the newspaper, read it aloud. You understand it, don't understand it, just read it. So I used to watch all those Star, uh, star Plus news readers, you know, Barkhatat, Rajdeep Sardesai. They were like really good people at that time. And um, I would imitate them. Oh, this is American accent. This is this is British accent. So from a very <laughs> young age, I would know that even English is like of different types and stuff. And then yeah. uh, very great teachers in school. Um, I think I we people are very blessed. Sorry, I'm just cutting you oh, off here. Yes, like yes. Um, our grandfathers or like fathers, they were very interested in all these things. I can really relate to your story. The free newspaper, watch news. I think it helps. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 that was the time when everything picked up. And and it's true that whatever you want your child to become, you need to start it from the very beginning because that's where they catch up that's where the habits develop and those things they go in long run like whatever you teach them today is is going to be their life it's going to be reflected in their life like 20 years later 30 years later and and that's how it all started and then school played a very important role because um in, in school it was all about that oh just read a story don't just try to understand it and even now can you imagine like the other day I was missing my book from grade 10. Um, it's it's called Figments of Imagination. It's a collection of short stories. And okay. I was Googling that, okay, I remember this story. I remember that story. And then everything was coming back. And when I went back and read the stories again, I'm like, oh my God, like these are really hard stories, which those guys made us to understand. Sure. Like they have deep meaning inside them. And that's how you learn your life lessons. So those are some of the things which really connected me. And Very still... rightly said. And you know, a kind of indelible imprint, we, which we say that whatever we have learned at that point of time, any story or something our teachers told us, they are still there in our memories, I think. <laughs> we are always going to cherish them. Yeah. All right. so I, I always hmm. want people to be very careful when they're choosing mm -hmm. the elementary school for their kids, yeah. because that's everything. Yeah. yeah. That I know that you are very choosy about that. I can, I do understand that. <laughs> with my short association with you, like short association in person, but yes, of course, through social media, we are still connected. I think it's uh, been nine years or something. Uh, I guess nine to ten years since we are like connected to each other. All right. So, like, uh, Harpit, uh, nursing, like this profession, like, why did you choose nursing? Like. Why in particular, or you had some kind of always this kind of, uh, um, you were interested in helping others or taking care of others or something? What was that? Why nursing? Yeah, it's it's going to be a very dramatic answer. Um, in So when I'll just talk a little bit about like how people do things in, in here. So when, when I came here in Canada, I, I teach in co uh, schools of nursing and I would go and ask people, and they're really passionate. They wanted to become a nurse or their parents decided they would like, okay, this is a good field. But when, when it is about India, you, you go into a nursing school right after grade 12. And, and at that time, all which is going on in your head is, okay, you know, secure something in your life and get, get somewhere. So for me, um, I had I had a cousin uh, who was already studying there, and I, I was I always looked forward to her. I always um, looked up to her, like she was she was insanely intellectual. She studied from the same school, and uh, she always motivated me to do good things in life. So I just wanted to follow her footsteps, and and here I am following her footsteps. No, I think that uh, it was a great role model to follow. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. A good decision. Yeah. 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 And initially I had no interest. Like I had no idea what nursing was all about. Uh, it was just, okay, there's this degree in nursing and it's new and, um, you know, it's, it's very uh, secure. You get a lot of money. That's, that's all the things which you, which you think about while choosing a profession. Right. But when I got into it, I, I was studying, things really changed and I started mm -hmm. realizing, okay, this is something I like. This is something mm -hmm. I I, I'm a people person. I want to talk to people. I, I feel very happy and satisfied when I help someone, even if it's like I was in a big hospital and somebody's like, oh, where, where is this particular place? Okay, no problem. Let me take you to that place. 
with such a short help or small step, it was it was very satisfying. So that led me to study so much and teach and, you know, uh, make others feel that nursing is not just giving injections and medicines. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Generally, we have this only like giving injections and all. <laughs> but yeah, Harpreet, you know, uh, like uh, this last year or one and a half year actually of this pandemic. So it's been like really challenging for nurses and especially for like anybody related to the like for healthcare workers, I would say. So how did you, like you people cope with this thing? Like it was really a hard time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I would, I would hundred percent agree with that. And um, there, are, there is a bright side to it, and there, then there is a downside to it. So downside mm -hmm. is that uh, we are burnt up, burnt out as hell. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so bad because the patient loads have increased, and um, you're seeing people dying. Um, knock on wood, it was not too, too bad here in um, BC. It was. Mm -hmm. It was not as bad as it was in many other places in the world, uh, but still that mental toll which it takes like, okay, you're seeing people coming in dying and you are there risking your life, um, not knowing that if you're going to get that disease or not. So those are the things which were really, really uh, getting bad. But the bright side was that people recognize you in a very yeah. different way now. So um, the word is finally there that, okay, these are the people who are with the patients the whole time. These are the people who are needed. We really need to take care of them. And um, so I live in Surrey, but um, in, in Vancouver, we had this parade every single day. All the emergency services, like our ambulances, the police cars and fire trucks, we used to do this parade where they used to do the sirens at 7 p.m. every single night in front of our biggest hospital, Vancouver General Hospital, and people used to wave and stuff. Yeah. So that, that's something which keeps you going. Okay, mm -hmm. so, you know, we are we are actually being recognized yeah. for the true thing which we do. So it's no mm -hmm. longer those characters which they show sometimes on social media, the wrong depiction of nurses. It's, mm -hmm. it's like... These are the people who are going to save our lives at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, like we all are humans and uh, be it nurses or a doctors or any other person, anybody like who's going through this some continuous, uh, you know, hours of working, they are going to burn out. So it was absolutely like normal on the part of uh, healthcare workers also. But if we talk about like you told that it, it seems very good when somebody is like uh, waving or more trying to motivate you. But still somewhere inside we feel low at times. So how was this inner, you know, uh, motivation was coming through? How, what was the reaction of family? Uh, you must have uh, seen some uh, longer duration of work and uh, separation from the family for a longer duration. So how like that period went? Yeah, well, uh, I think my, my family and the team those were the biggest support. So mm -hmm. uh, because we we were hit by the pandemic like way later than the rest of the world. So we were kind of like prepared that whenever it's gonna come, this is gonna be our situation. So as I said, it was like it was not like too too bad. We had only like one or two units in the hospital, in the entire hospital where we could keep mm -hmm. the COVID patients. Um, but it's the team, like the team which keeps you going, that mm -hmm. they really take care of you, they talk to you. And uh, this is the best part of working in Canadian healthcare setting that they not only take care of your physical burnout, but they're very much uh, concerned about your mental burnout as well. So we mm. have a special like team of um, psychologists who always look after nurses. Like they would, they would call you, they would talk to you that hey, you know, how is it going? Like do you need any kind of support, any counselings? Which always helps you that you have someone who you can talk with. Yeah, and then family. We are Indian, so family understands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. So this was only my next question. You have already touched upon that. That, um, like the culture over here, like the Canadian setup and everything. So I wanted to ask you that because in Punjab we are very curious about life in Canada. <laughs> 
Yeah. So usually, uh, like my friends who, who reside, you know, outside Punjab, they usually ask me that, why Canada? Why are you, why are you people so crazy for Canada? And they also know this thing, our uh, craze or passion uh, to reach, you know, the Canadian land. So like you tell me, that, how is life over there? Yeah, over here. <laughs> It's beautiful. Yes, over here. It's it's beautiful. Like I've seen a huge difference. So okay. I moved here probably like six years ago. And hmm. uh, definitely when you when you come from the re- other side of the world, like you hmm. have you have so many crashes, like culture shock, you know, it's it's different. They're very hmm. open people. And then um then you have your own struggles you have to start from the very scratch. You were doing something really good in your country and now okay. Okay, you have to, and you have to accept. Right? Yeah, easily you easier you accept it, it, it gets better for you, right? The faster and everything. So uh, that that's only a couple of years, like maybe one year or two years max. But once you are in in routine and you you get hold of this life, it it is it is beautiful. Like the environment is gorgeous. So I live in BC, BC, British Columbia. It's one of the most okay. beautiful places on earth. Mm-hmm. Like just like Switzerland, if you need any um, comparison, <laughs> yeah, but, like, we have mountain. It, it is a rainforest, so mm-hmm. people must explore. Like if you ever ever coming to Canada, like this is something you should never miss out on visiting. And uh, then the about people, people are so friendly. So mm-hmm. this was something which was really, really like it, it was giving me happiness in the beginning that you were you're walking down the street. And no one would just pass by you without saying the hello or wishing you or asking oh, you how are you doing. You're going mm-hmm. for uh, buying your groceries. The cashier is going to ask you how's your day going. You're going to go buy mm-hmm. a coffee. The, the barista is going to ask you how are you how's your day going. So these these are the things which like I I, I love this. Like I I don't I don't want people to frown at each other or look at each other with weird eyes. And, <laughs> and, and really. I love like this is the mm-hmm. this is my most favorite part and then mm-hmm. and then people are nice like they they mm-hmm. respect everyone they respect for human life so even if mm-hmm. um, i ever emerge for some, some time and um even if you have a person coming from the streets like a homeless person we would mm-hmm. still give them the same level of care which we, i would give to the prime minister of this country wow. so it's, it's exactly the same because healthcare yeah. is of uh, you don't have to pay for healthcare. There's no discrimination on the basis of that. And uh, people say racism exists everywhere. There is only that 0.01% of people who would ever do that. But but mm-hmm. this country is very multicultural. Like they are, they accept immigrants. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that I live in Siri, which you okay. can call it Punjab. So you okay. would never just India. You would you would be surprised uh, to see how much uh, Punjabi people, Indian people have achieved in this country. (laughs) All the big mansions, like you would go a street and you're like, okay, big mansion. Okay, this must belong to an Indian person, a Punjabi or a Punjabi. And then this little house, it is a white person's house because they don't want houses. We still want big houses, big cars, big businesses. So you can achieve anything. That's Mm -hmm. what I feel just have to have that dream and manifest it you will achieve yeah, thousands it. of miles away from your motherland and i have heard or like seen in the movies that even the sign um, uh, the sign posts over there or something they have like uh, everything is written in punjabi also yes that's right that's right my my son goes to a punjabi school so that's ironic that i went to a convent school and now i send my son to a punjabi school oh and that's God. Because I want him to learn the mother tongue, right? Otherwise, mm-hmm. he's going to lose it. So where I'm emphasizing, my husband emphasizes, so we have this strict rule to talk in Punjabi at home. Um, okay. Because if, you're, if you want to live in BC, like especially in Surrey, you need hmm. to have Punjabi. If you don't speak okay. Punjabi, you will have lesser job opportunities. Because oh, my God. <laughs> population, yeah, you need to be bilingual in Punjabi and English. You know, yeah, total uh, contrast. Like, if we see the trend here in Punjab, it's more of uh, avoiding Punjabi and speaking English. And there you have, uh, like, uh, the country where English is the first language. And there you have people, uh, like, emphasizing Punjabi. Absolutely. See. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this is not just me like everybody here everybody like yeah. you will hmm. you can like any if you have any any friends or relatives who would come over you will see that hmm. they will ask their kids like please talk in punjabi like that's what i i say a million times every single day and okay. everybody not only me yeah that's great that's absolutely amazing wow yeah. <laughs> all right so uh, like life in general if we don't talk about uh, though you have told uh, that it's very comfortable over here and like there are many students like i can talk about my own students that the first preference is going to canada whatever it is like earlier it used to be australia but now they want to come to uh, like canada what is your like suggestion to them usually what i see is like uh, though they go from here they move from here as students and they have in their mind that i want to study over there but very like quickly they they get distracted and then the whole attention is on earning money instead of completing the course first though they can go for part time jobs and everything it's normal over there with the canadian people or the natives also i mean but what is your suggestion to the new generation and the, and the, um uh, like who are interested in moving to canada yeah i mean like it's it's definitely um different for everyone like my situation mm -hmm. might not work for everyone so mm -hmm. it's just what i thought think of my opinion right um like to me i moved here when i was i was mature enough that i could take care of myself i mm -hmm. knew what i was going to do in the next few years like i had this whole plan visualized and written down like and that's how my even my husband is like we would we would not go anywhere without any plans plans um, mm -hmm. yeah so even though we knew that it might not work out but but okay it worked out right you like i like i believe in that manifestation and stuff like you have to think about this stuff and keep thinking and it's going to come up, come for you so for if you're coming as a as an international student definitely life is really hard because um you can work only for certain hours and then and then they have to work more to get their fee for the next semester and stuff which they think hearing from the others that they can very well earn but that's where exploitation goes in so i would i would want at least like be a graduate like study there because studying in india is way easier as compared to studying here and uh, as as you will be studying on your parents money you will be living at your parents house or or maybe in a hostel where you have food prepared for you you don't have to worry about any extra expenses all you need to do is make a phone call and your father is going to deposit it in your bank absolutely so it's here right because the currency is so so different like it, the dollar is expensive so mm -hmm. that's where the problem comes so i i encourage people that uh, choose any kind of field in your home country where you are getting skilled it could be it it could be nursing mm -hmm. it could be dentistry physiotherapy like anything where you have a skill mm -hmm. and you come here it's easier to transition that skill from your so country right. to canada as compared to if you come here after grade 12 that is that is the problem in me because after grade 12 i was not mature enough to make such huge decisions of my life as to where i should work with whom i should stay with whom i should hang out how much money do i need so that they they are the people who actually get exploited because they're very immature and mm -hmm. very tender and there's no one here to tell them the truth side or guide them through so i would that's something like my i personally feel but because i know that a lot of people might uh, feel this is not right as they feel mm -hmm. that four years or three years of graduation is a waste of time they could do a lot in canada but actually mm -hmm. i i don't think that is a waste of time what i, I uh, like personally feel harpreet um you know the same thing it happens everywhere people just see that uh, you know the trophy in your hand like they have achieved something they don't see the efforts you know the sleepless yeah. nights somebody had the so same way for canadian life like they uh, they will see their relatives or their cousins or anybody that that person is uh, standing at a beautiful location near the niagara falls and you know <laughs> clicking uh, <laughs> photographs but they absolutely. don't understand the kind of pressure they go through absolutely yeah absolutely that mm -hmm. and 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 we have to start understanding that social media is fake like i would never yeah. post a bad picture of myself on social media <laughs> i might not even look Absolutely. like me i post 
things on social media, right? So mm. it's fake, and we have to start realizing that now is the time. It's it's high mm. time now. That's I think absolutely that is something which allures people that oh you know what this person bought a BMW like six months in, and they have to understand that okay this person worked so hard for for yeah. purchasing a BMW, and then it's it's a waste of money as well because they spend their whole money mm. and now they. Sell it, and they just bought it for one picture. Or that BMW might not be that person's BMW <laughs> most of the time. So yeah, we have to start understanding that social media mm -hmm. is fake. Like kids need to be counselled more. I think mm -hmm. uh, Indian children needs, like especially Punjabi kids, they need to have better. Absolutely, like Harpreet, uh, like uh, from the point of view of a Punjabi, just see, a Punjabi who did not taste bare, like a little gehrai, they which utter the koshish kari. I mean, I'm sorry, trying to be a little philosophical over here, but. Uh, Parents na bhi pressure bahut zada renda hai. Apne bachchan de upper parental pressure, societal pressure, or jive aaj kal asi Punjab de vich a trend dekh rahe hain ki just go for IELTS and you know achieve a particular band. The just marriages bhi fix ho rahi hain ne. Is cheez nu madde nazar rakde hoy ki IELTS da band score kiya. And then absolutely ohi cheez ki thonu sirf o chakka chon nazar aari hai Canada di Canadian life di. Thonu efforts nazar nii aare ki वैदर कि और सर्दी के कि जल्दी उठ के अपनी डैसटीनेशन पर जाना है अपने काम के लिए जाना है और आ, किस तरह वो डॉलर अर्न करने वॉट इज योर टेक ऑन दैट वट डू यू थिंक अबाउट इट अबाउट द प्रेसर पीपल हैव I feel sad about this like every single day. Like whenever I talk to someone and uh, I I look at their viewpoint and and I feel sad. I actually feel sad. Like honestly, mm -hmm. I have people in my family. Who who got married this way, and okay. I don't see I don't see the point of such kind of a marriage. Like like people mm -hmm. have really really gone to that standard, but mm -hmm. they have totally damaged the concept of marriage. Like marriage. I was okay to arrange marriage, it was mm -hmm. still like a question mark in my head, but but I was still okay. Okay, fine. Like at least they're looking at you know the family. They're looking at yeah. the person. Uh, education. They're looking at how how they look like, or they're looking at like how they talk and all that stuff. Like, because that's the best you can guess in an arranged marriage. But now it's like oh, your TRF, your IELTS score should be defined. <laughs> Who are you going to get married? Which is like in like ten years later or twenty years later, when these guys are going to get old, if they are still together, like hmm. what are the things they're going to discuss? Like. How how are Absolutely. they going to be together? On what basis? That that makes me sad. And and parents should like think about it. A 19 year old girl getting married to a 21 year old boy. What are you thinking, guys? Like, this is, are we retrograding in our civilization? We were doing much better. We were actually doing really better. But then all of a sudden, this deterioration. It is really depressing. and that also like uh, if we talk about the earlier times uh, even if uh, they are getting they were getting married at an uh, like um, early age or something then the family was there to hold their hands yes. now like you know uh, this new trend of the girl is staying in their like in laws uh, houses only for 5 to 10 days leaving the house and then they expect a long term relationship like they are absolutely mature 19 to 20 years of like they are kids i mean <laughs> If you honestly ask me, you know when uh, this whole thing happened, like that's the reason we're talking about definitely. I was I was listening to a lot of like shows about this, uh, about people who are like who are in the field and stuff. And then we have we have a community radio in in Surrey, and they they really like bring up all these good good topics mm -hmm. so that society is aware. And and it's obvious you're coming far away from a person mm -hmm. who you met for like ten days. and now you are meeting another guy who you're talking you're liking them it's, hmm. it's so cute. it's obvious to fall that such a, such a no, tender age it. right you all have been no. there and how can we blame how can we expect a commitment from a person who who have from two people like who haven't been together as you're saying like just for 10 days and then days. life is is so different from life there hmm. and no one can Stand that unless they come here and they see the life there. Like for example, mm -hmm. let's say 
I don't cook, right? So mm-hmm. we we eat like I don't cook in the sense that I don't I don't cook sabjiya dala every day because mm-hmm. I don't. Cook so we have, but but we eat healthy. Like we we eat healthy. We we are nourished. We eat good, but no one will understand that. And if I tell this to my mummy, like my mom, and she's like. <laughs> You're a lazy person. Like at least you should feed your husband. You should feed your son. So they don't realize that the food we eat is like better than the food that they eat. But um, well, that notion, so no one can understand it unless you come here. So oh, okay. So she doesn't do that. But you, you have to realize that she spent like twelve hours in an office, like talking to people, and brings food to the table. And yeah, so that's Absolutely. the problem. That is- Hmm. So people just see one side of the picture. They don't. They are not able to understand the things. And then you have like uh, you uh, spend um, uh, you know eighteen to twenty hours outside working uh, part time, studying, and then you reach home. You get phone calls from the family, uh, pressurizing you that call us. When are you calling us to Canada? And then obviously people are going to feel that pressure or something. Like it's it is difficult. I guess it is difficult. So Life I think. We have to we have to kind of like start thinking of going mm-hmm. back to our normal life. This this is not our normal. This was never mm-hmm. our normal. As I said, we were doing way better than this. That there was this. I I was okay until like people used to get married to a Canadian guy or who was mm-hmm. here for a while, and then the girl is from India. But at least there's a family involved, and mm-hmm. you know, it's it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So if I talk about you, that how like um, you've told like the the food thing and everything. <laughs> so how do you like make this balance as a professional? Your your job is a challenging job, and then uh, mom, the role of a mom. How do you like uh, do justice with all both of these roles? Yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure if everything is being justice justice. Everything is uh-huh. getting the justice it needs. Uh, but but we all we all try right. So, yeah. um, so the thing was that um, I I transitioned from um, working in the hospital to uh, working as a full time nursing educator, mm-hmm. which which helped me to not go for night shifts. And mm-hmm. uh, I work with my husband, so he's my boss. I'm his boss. So that that's that is. <laughs> And then um, now my son is older, so we don't have anything to do for him. Like he's a very independent guy. I mean, okay. you have to do literally like anything for him. He knows what he needs, so he's gonna ask me. But mm-hmm. definitely was more challenging when he was young. However, mm-hmm. I was so blessed for so my my parents-in-law, my husband's parents, who I always call them my parents. They have been so such a great help. And this mm-hmm. is another thing about being in Canada that um, you you start realizing you need your parents more than anything because they are the ones who are going to take care of your kid and your yeah. you when <laughs> you are in that struggling phase. So mm-hmm. my parents-in-law were very actively participating in our life. They were always there when, when I needed them. They they are the ones, I would say, honestly, like who raised my child and made him so independent that now I ha- I don't have to worry about it. So we work together as in a house. So it's not that he is the man and the woman and I have to do this mm-hmm. and yes. It's all divided. Like we would, we would mm-hmm. back, work in the same office. We we would cook together. We would go out together. So it's like very divided. We would even clean up together because this is Canada. Okay. You to do yourself. So we would divide <laughs> up as a family and you know make it fun fill. So this is how everyone does here. So you have mm-hmm. to help your wife in the kitchen, or I have to help him in the garden. So it's very. Like you have to contribute to your family as a whole. Mm-hmm. I think that's something which uh, keeps me going, and and I never get tired. I'm always happy. So yeah, because I'm not burdened. I don't feel burdened at all. No, this is absolutely like an absolute delight to hear from you. This thing, I think people in India need to learn this thing uh, from the life abroad. Like we copy, we try to copy everything from there, but we never see this, uh, you know, husband-wife uh, balancing uh, the family and the professional front. These things, uh, like also, we need to learn from that society. Absolutely. It is a positive yeah. point, I think when uh, like it's not a kind of like burden on the wife only that you only need to cook the food you only need to do this or that like both of them are contributing that's a 
absolutely beautiful thing about Canadian life. <laughs> All right. So what change have you seen in yourself, the way you were here? And uh, once you've gone there, means a lot of learning, but mm -hmm. any other thing like um, temperament or something which you have seen that now you're more uh, patient or something, anything like. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I, I have a long list of such things. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is like, absolutely. So I think the first thing is I'm, I'm, I'm kinder. Like I am kind to people. Okay. I and I don't judge anyone, right? So this okay. judgment, huh. I never knew hmm. that we were all judgmental. Like, I never knew huh. this until you come here and you see that people don't care about what's going on in your life. People do. Hmm. The only thing they care about is who are you? How yeah. are you dealing with them? Right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's something I I really honestly learned and, and I have inculcated that. So I would I would never say to anyone that oh like what are they doing oh they, they can't even do this or that because you never know what's going on in their life and moreover everyone has a special quality in them right so mm -hmm. and this is something we really need to learn um, because uh, in in our country especially in the type of environment I was raised education was the only thing which ma mattered to us like we were never um kind of respecting people who had skills you know how mm -hmm. if a house you would never even want to talk to them because you feel that they're lower but here everybody is respected like they say that uh, if a job is bringing food to your table hmm. that job needs to be respected even if you're doing cleanup even if yeah. you're working at a grocery store as a cashier or you are a CEO of the company, they would all go to the same grocery store and buy the same kind of food, right? So this is a very beautiful is thing about uh, the people or the kind of uh, lifestyle uh, people have here in, uh, you know, in the West, I should say. Yeah. Respect for each and every profession. Yeah. You're very right yeah. into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I right. don't... I don't know how many like more years uh, will it take for us to understand that. Do we are like emphasizing on skills nowadays? Like it's more uh, like preference is given to skills, but still we need to learn to respect each and every uh, profession. Absolutely, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. if everyone is a doctor, if everyone is an engineer, then who is going to build houses? Who is going to true. fix our plumbing issues? So we true, need people. True. Every sector of the world, and and those people mm. need to be respected. Yeah, totally. very nice. Uh, right. So just for a change, when you were talking all this, you know, at the back of my mind, what was um, <laughs> coming? I remember that we all used to uh, spend time on um, like. I was more interested in literature, so my uh, like hobby was to read books or English books and everything. And then I remember you uh, were learning French. At that point of time, way back <laughs> 10 years ago, I still remember we were not aware that you have any plans of going to Canada. Oh, I still I, remember. Yeah. And there was a Punjabi song at that point of time, <laughs> if you want me to tell you. There was a line in that Punjabi song, no, Sanu Andina Angrezi, or French Sikhdi. That just came to my mind that this girl, she used to learn French. <laughs> we were worried about English vocab. Yeah. Oh, at that time, I had no no idea. You know, I have a very a very good friend of mine who who I who, who I just met just like you, like out of nowhere. So she uh -huh. graduated in French, and then she did her post graduation <laughs> in French. She lives in Dubai now. Okay. And I always used to talk to her, and she used to teach me a few words. And then she said, "Okay, you know, you start learning." And and then I started, but then I I didn't even like complete any levels. It was just for fun. <laughs> Like, I just know how to talk with my son because he sometimes, um, you know, he, they have the second language as French mm. in school, so I can understand him. But other than that, yeah, I know. It was oh you know, suddenly it came to my mind that she, you used to scroll for French vocabulary and everything on your laptop. Well, yeah, we were still well, learning better synonyms in English. <laughs> so that just suddenly came to my mind. Okay, Harpri. So now, like, I'm going to like uh, put you in a little bit of trouble. 
though uh, i would like to tell my viewers that harpreet already loves uh, rapid fires and all she likes to put stress on her brains <laughs> So I'm going to ask you a few questions and I want a rapid response, okay? As you are already an expert of this field, so I'll see like uh, how many, you know, microseconds you are going to take to answer me. <laughs> Though my list of questions, it's a lot of your level. I should have brought like some difficult questions, but still like, okay. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm not going to give you any hamper, but still. <laughs> I'll give you my address at the end. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, Harpreet as a wife or Harpreet as a mom? Better version. Harpreet as a mom. As a mom. Right. Okay. So, which is your favorite summer activity? Because usually it's winter over there. Yeah. Summer activity. Going to the beach and laying mm -hmm. there down. And I, I just want to sleep on the beach. Yeah. That's my favorite activity. <laughs> Not doing anything, literally. <laughs> Do nothing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> If I have to, like, um, I give you time to describe yourself in three words, quickly. Okay, I am, I'm, I'm very passionate about anything I choose to do. I love the people when I love them. I hate them when I hate them. And um, I, I talk a lot. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm a good <laughs> yeah, so, so three words for your husband. Um, very kind, super mm -hmm. kind. Um, super perfectionist in anything okay. he does. Is he like preparing the dinner tonight that uh, you are so like... Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> that he's very kind, he's super kind. <laughs> he is, he is, yeah, he is, yeah. And, um, and, and the most handsome guy I've ever met. <laughs> oh, wow. So adorable. <laughs> All right. So if a movie uh, like has to be made on your life, who would play you? Tapsi Panna. Tapsi Bandu. Okay. And what would be the name of the movie? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. What would be the name <laughs> of that movie? On the life of Harpreet <laughs> Nath Barar. The, the, the Nightingale. Because we had Florence Nightingale. <laughs> funny. So nursing oh here also. Hmm. Okay. So in that movie, we have to put a Punjabi song. Which song will you put in that? We can do that French one. <laughs> French. <laughs> French. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So if I ask you that who do you admire the most in your life? Other than your husband, who's very kind. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So until my dad, my dad was here, I was, I was his biggest fan. And now um, no one could replace him. But my father in law is the guy I admire the okay. most. Like, he has done so much for us. I can never even repay his whatever he has done. So for sweet. Us. So sweet of you. <laughs> okay, two things in your bucket list. Travel, travel as soon as the pandemic's over. We just realized our passports are expired, so we cannot go anywhere. So yeah. we want them to come back and <laughs> so that we just go back to our traveling mode. And another thing is I I just I just want to live like an I, I want to retire soon. As soon as I, I can, I want to retire. Okay. Do you think you can you can retire? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So like if I give you a chance, like uh, you can go for a, you know, have a coffee date with a celebrity who's uh, like no more in the world, celebrity or any great personality, who would that be? The person is like no more in, in this world. Who would that Irfan. be? Irfan Khan. Irfan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good. Good answer. So are you a night person or a morning person? Uh, morning person. I'm, morning. I'm awake at 7.30 a.m. I'm live streaming. So <laughs> you guys can understand. I'm already making I was so worried like when I sent the link to join the broadcast. I was seeing that oh my god the girl has not even seen my message. I was so worried. I thought she might be sleeping and I need I'm to deliberately doing that to you. <laughs> I'm so worried. But thank you so much for being on no time problem. you know. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, that what are you, uh, you know, one thing you are most proud of? Uh, who, who I am, like what have I become? I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. So if I have to 
I, I don't have anything to say to a 20 year old me or, you know, th- those kind of things. Yeah. And I want to grow old gracefully. Like I'm proud mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm 35 and um, yeah. I'm going to be 40 in the next five years and I'm not scared <laughs> of anything. So I feel, I feel like that, that power in me. So I feel my 30s were very powerful. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I remember like you were always proud of yourself. You had always <laughs> said this thing that I'm very fortunate. I'm, I'm very thankful to the God that uh, I have I'm always got everything, whatever I like aspired for. Absolutely. I'm also absolutely proud of you. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, Harpreet. So wonderful. You gave the answers on time. <laughs> like I was thinking, we saw, you know, trying to put some stress, but no, my questions were of no use. Like they were powerless in front of you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Harpreet, like uh, one piece of advice for everybody, especially the women out there. As a yeah. as a professional, as um, like as a mother and a professional who has achieved everything at this age, so what a piece of advice would you like to give to the young girls and women out there? You know what? Uh, I have always laid boundaries in every relationship I have been, and I think those things they work well because then people realize that you need to be respected. Like I. Mm-hmm. I would hate the fact if I'm I'm loving someone and respecting someone going out of my way and I don't get that back. So I don't believe in those, uh, you know, sacrifices that women have to sacrifice this and that. I think everyone needs to contribute to a household. And if, if like you should talk to your partners, like you should communicate when we do not communicate directly with our partner and we're talking and this is how we are told, right? So if I have any issue, instead of talking to my partner, I would talk to my mom, I would talk to my sister, yeah. <laughs> just ventilating myself. Yeah. But my partner is not aware that they hurt me. So communicating and setting yes. boundaries in relationships is is so important. Otherwise, no one no one thinks that you're worth anything. Like I've been there, so I know like it's important to come out of that hole and uh you know, and, and just stay happy, chill. Don't give a damn about what people think about you. Just close your ears and do whatever whatever you want to wear, whatever type of clothes you want, wear them, whatever you want to eat, eat it. Don't worry about what will people think. We have to stop doing that. Yeah, we've come a long way. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. And like, this is such a beautiful piece of advice, these sacrifices and all. First, we put ourselves into these uh, uh, melodramatic situations. And then at the end of the day, then we expect the partner to understand everything. And you are absolutely right over here. When we have not even told the poor soul what the problem is, how will he come to know? Like if we are yeah. sharing with yeah. mother. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look at his condition that everybody uh, like uh, except him like everybody else knows the problem but he is not aware of that so yeah. this is something very beautiful you have told I totally agree with that yeah so I think communication is everything the more you communicate yeah. the more they mm-hmm. understand and, and this is another thing which I feel about like men these days they're not like our dads like my dad was yeah. a different kind of a husband he was very patriarchal like, he was so yeah. good to us me, my, me and my sister but he was not a very good husband to my mom he was hmm. listening to other people more than my mom he was taking her for granted but but my husband is different so he would he knows my words so he would respect mm-hmm. me more than anybody else and i i am the first person in any decision making and stuff like i don't want him to put his parents at the back seat i i love them you know i love them mm-hmm. right so but at the same time, I, I need I need a place and I need that special place in my husband's life. So I think if we if we are if we are kind of demanding that, we need yeah. to talk to them. <laughs> and and guys are are more loving these days. Like they help women yeah. out. More. I think this new set of husbands and this new generation, they are more enlightened. <laughs> they they do their homework well before getting married that how to make a balance <laughs> okay all right so this has brought us to the end of our talk for today Harpreet thank you so much for being here like I'm so happy and I'm so thankful to you that I know you are a very busy person but still for me you like at 7 30 in the morning you're ready here <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> 
Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. And um, and I I love the fact that we reconnected on, on such a good platform. Yeah. I'm really proud of what you're doing. And I, I wish you all the best in life. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I wish you the best for all your future endeavors. And uh, keep on, like, guiding the people. You and your husband, you are doing a wonderful job. You know, guiding people. You are the right channel. So I would like to tell my viewers that, especially the people who, like, uh, belong to the field of nursing that any kind of uh, guidance help you require um, being a person belonging to the field of nursing if you want to settle in Canada so please Harpreet Bharat is the right person they can um, they can connect with you through your Facebook I hope and even she's there on Instagram she has a YouTube channel also you can tell about your social media handles yes <laughs> yeah so our Facebook <laughs> Page. We recently changed it. It was all under my name, but then we, we created this company. So our company is called Perfect Steps Learning. And uh, our YouTube uh, page is based on that. Then my YouTube channel is my name, Harpreet Brar. And I post videos about how to get into nursing when you are coming from in any other country all over the world. And we have students connecting with us from around the globe, which is interesting to see, like different cultures and talking to different people. It's it's all fun. So um, we will always be there to guide you because we have been through the process. So uh, we understand the emotional part of it, the, the yeah. psychological part of it, as well as the financial. Mm -hmm. part. And we are here to help people in whatever. We yeah, ask. I always knew that you are the right person. If I like uh, keep in mind this field as a nurse, if somebody wants to settle in Canada, then Harpreet Barar is the right person to contact. Please, <laughs> instead of going here and there and wasting your time, connect with her. Thank you so much, Harpreet. Thank you so much for coming today. So, so viewers, this was uh, this, the Trailblazers series. And today we had Harpreet Dhatbara from Vancouver, Canada. So she explained her story and see such a wonderful uh, person she is and still doing wonderful works and very kind, very kind hearted person. So it was absolute delight to have her on Mindfulness with Drew for today. And I promise you to bring another Trailblazer in the next talk show. Till then, goodbye. Take care of yourselves.